Hey everybody, before we get started, I wanted to make a quick announcement. Later this month, we're doing our first cast party episode. That is going to go up on the stream, but it'll also be live streamed on YouTube. And what that is, is it's an episode where we're every month at the end of the month, we're going to get together with the cast of the actual play and sit down and have an episode where we all just get together and talk about what's been going on in the campaign so far. Maybe, you know, how it's been playing together, some behind-the-scenes looks and insights on our characters, and just stuff where we sit together and have fun and chat. And we want you guys to participate in a live stream of it. If you're not able to be there, that's not a problem. We're going to record it and put it out as an episode at the end of the month on the actual play. Now, that first one is going to be on Monday, September 26th. If you want to be there live, then you're going to want to pay attention to the uh, Complex Action Facebook page or YouTube channel for Complex Action's actual play. And you'll want to look for the YouTube uh, live stream, which I'll post on Complex Action's Facebook page and provide as a link uh, probably in the show notes or in other places. You'll be able to find it on Twitter and whatnot. But it's going to be 8.30 p.m., on Monday, September 26th. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm really looking forward to it. So hope to see you there. If you can't make it again, you'll be able to download the audio from the episode. So have fun and enjoy the episode today. Listening to the Complex Action Actual Play Podcast. After getting a lead on a description of some guys that were looking for Poncho, the team makes the rounds and hits up their contacts to narrow down the search for who these people are who might have Poncho captive. Oh, and Elric has a bit of a rough morning. He's gonna need some coffee. Now please enjoy episode four Phone Calls. Okay, so to give us a reminder of what's going on, kind of to get us up to speed of where we are so far, is um, so you guys are looking for Pancho, who is supposed to be a witness in um, Justice Shields, the case that the lawyer Justice Shields is building for his uh, client. And you guys are looking for Pancho, who's going to be a key witness, and... Um, also, you're looking for his comlink because he suspects, at least his client says so, suspects that there's some incriminating evidence on there that probably would be harmful to his case. So he wants you to find that in addition to finding Poncho, destroy the comlink. He doesn't care anything about the data on the comlink. Um, just make sure it doesn't get out, destroy the comlink and the data, and bring Poncho to him. He needs that. They're going to trial on Monday. Right now it's Thursday night. It's probably about, I'd say, 10.30 at night right now on Thursday, uh, August 18th, 2078. You guys, uh, after following some leads that were... You were having trouble find, finding a lead, but you managed to find uh, Poncho's apartment. You went to check out the apartment. You found the comm link there. Poncho wasn't there. But on the way out, Pillar had a chat with the old lady on on uh, on Pon the floor, same floor as Poncho's apartment. She said that there were two guys with black hoodies that were there the night before, um, and they had a symbol on their black hoodie that uh, that she described to you. And um, and they were snooping around and looked really suspicious. And they didn't break into the apartment. Uh, she kind of you know. They got spooked, I guess, and um, and she never ended up talking to him, but they looked really suspicious. Also, Alpine, just as a reminder, Alpine from the Dragons um, gang, he, uh, he's offered to pay you guys 500 new yen if you can get him the location of Poncho as well, because they're looking for him too. Poncho is associated with this anti-metahuman gang, the Dragons, or at least it's suspected that they have anti-metahuman kind of leanings. So that's where you guys are. Uh, Haley had, when when you guys all went into the apartment to go look around, Haley had stepped away. She said, um, 
when you guys got to Cornell Arms, the apartment building, which was pretty much across the street almost, like maybe a block down and across the street from the horseshoe, where Haley spends a lot of time, uh, she said she needed to stop into the horseshoe and uh, and take care of something or grab something. And so she stepped out and, and uh, she's probably going to be meeting up with you guys now since you guys are done in the apartment. Um, so I'm not sure what Haley was doing there. What was Haley doing there? Hmm. Well, Haley needs to, because she has uh, amnesia, she needs to investigate any um, clues about her past. So she could have noticed something that made her go look in her journal. Sounds good. Well, she's done journaling now, I guess. Okay. And if I remember it, we found this guy's comlink too, right? It was under his bed. Yes, and we haven't destroyed it, as was instructed. Not yet, anyway. Oh, and yeah, there's to remind you, uh, Payday got some of his agents, agent program to, or he got a Eon to help him uh, bust into the comlink. And you guys, it wasn't hard. You guys found a video on there of basically it looked like um, you didn't see the leader of the dragons. His name is Icefire the leader of the dragons you found that out through your legwork uh, but you didn't see him actually attack or let me rephrase that you didn't see him kill the the murder victim Samuel Johnson but you did see him beating him up in like a dingy kind of room dark room and um, it was being recorded on this comm link that was found under Poncho's bed so we've got essentially um well, yeah, true. It, it, it wouldn't really uh, incriminate him for the murder unless they were able to piece things together for that. So this might not be the full pay data we're looking for. Mm, do we have any other leads? I think that uh, other than that little old lady talk, um, we were pretty dry. We had thought maybe the dragons had something to do with it, and then we realized that Poncho was on the dragon side and the dragons are the guys who essentially want him back really so yeah, i mean the only other thing we got from that old lady is they were dressed in purple and blue hoodies i believe with one of them had red eyes they were black hoodies but uh the symbol on the back was kind of like a silhouette of a hooded figure with red eyes and it, the the symbol was in yes dark purple and black perfect this was a great time for uh, pretty much no one in the group to take any gang knowledges. Well, uh, we can... is there anybody that I would have talked to about? Uh, well, no, we wouldn't have. I wouldn't have talked to the old lady yet. Never mind. You could try to. We could try to matrix search the uh, the symbol. See if we could cross reference it with uh, news stories or any other things like that to try to step in for some of that gang knowledge. Yeah, I was just trying to figure out if why I stepped away so if I but I didn't talk to the old lady yet so I didn't notice I wasn't told about it so it wouldn't have triggered anything as you know we'll tell you about it now boom well yeah now everywhere. so when are we are we officially starting now Bobby or yes so I'll I'll ask the question that starts it all off what do you guys do well, after conveying the information that we found in regards to what the old lady told Pillar about, perhaps uh, Haley might be able to do some matrix reconnaissance. Well, yeah. Let's see. Um, silhouette with red eyes. Okay. Let's see what I can find. Six. Mm, well, with six hits, um, it's difficult. You don't have like the best description in for for uh search friendly things so it's it's hard to dig around for while you're doing what you're doing now you could spend a lot of time probably digging around in the matrix hours and hours and and whatnot but um just an initial search you don't find a whole lot you your best bet might be to if you have any uh, contacts or some somebody who like street contacts who might be uh familiar with street gangs or something i uh, i'd rather not 
call Marauder up so quick after I just did. I got a few friends here and there. I don't know how much they know about gangs. Well, um, I know somebody. I mean, I kind of know him. We haven't actually talked, but he's tried to talk to me, and um, maybe I could talk to him. You're rambling. Who is it? Well, um, he he's this guy, and he's in this gang, and he kind of uh. wants me to join this gang, but I don't know if I want to join this gang. Yeah, let's start there. Okay. Give him a call. Okay. Um, and so I will call uh, Z-Trip. He has a connection for loyalty two. I got a four. Right, give me just a sec. Wait a minute. Somebody wants you in a gang. Yeah. You. Yeah. Can I be in a gang? I look really good in black. Frag. I believe it. How do you look good in black? You got so many colors as it is. Well, I mean, black goes with everything. Yeah, I don't know. I'd be real careful about joining a gang. Well, that's why I haven't joined it yet. Well, they're, you know, they tend to be pretty finicky about when you're allowed to not be in the gang anymore if you decide to move on with your life. Hey, man, gangs are how some people survive. Don't worry, Rudolph's already giving me the talk. He's a good man. Hey, I'm not here to tell you what, you, what, what, what to do. I'm just saying, make your decision real careful. No, nah, you can tell her what to do. It's a stupid idea. I'm not stupid. No, your idea is stupid. Or, well, his idea is stupid. Either way, you're not joining a gang. Well, what if I want to join a gang? Let her do it, man. Let her do it. All right, Z-Trip. I mean, I didn't say I <laughs> did. I just said I might want to. Look, you're Seriously, Payday, are you trying to talk her into joining a gang or what? I'm, I'm talking her out of joining a gang. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm talking her out of it. No, no, it sounds more to me like you're doing the opposite. Uh... Z-Trip answers the comm. You uh, see him. He's... His, his, uh, you, you basically, yeah, you see he's got a kind of a faux, a blue faux hawk and, uh, some, some nice, some nice dark, bright blue eyes and, uh, and everything. He answers the phone or answers the comm call and says, Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Love the hair. Hmm. Well, you know, me too. <laughs> Well, um, so there's this guy we're trying to find. Whoa, whoa, hey. slow, slow your roll there, S sister. Uh, we, what, you got to chat a guy up before you start asking him favors. Well, I didn't ask the favor yet. I could, I could sense it. I could smell it coming. Wow. Um, hi. So, have you, have you? Last we talked, I was um trying to talk you into have you considered what we talked about mm, no i know you seem to be in a little state of denial or or uh self doubt or whatever you might want to call it but you've got a certain set of skills that i think you're willingly being oblivious to that would prove very useful to me and my friends. Wow, that's why I'm looking for this guy. What guy? Who's the guy? What guy? I was trying to tell you, silly. We're looking for this guy. And there's other people looking for him, but we want to find him first. So he, the people who want to find him have black hoodies with a purple silhouette and red eyes. Okay, darling, let me... You're not giving me much to go on here, and and what do I, I want to help you, you find some other guy for anyway? I I'm the I'm I want to be the only oh, man in your life, know. sweetheart. Oh, okay. Well, I can call somebody else. Okay, cool it, cool it. Don't have to get sassy with me. All right, tell me more about this this guy. So so you're wanting to find somebody, and and you weren't able to find him yourself. I take it. Well, not yet. I have friends to help though. Right, right. I assume you. You did some click clacking away at a at a terminal somewhere and and uh, didn't look too much deeper because you you seem to forget it. I won't push anymore. Um, w tell me more about this guy. People are looking for him, and we need to like stop them from looking for him. So I need to know about the guys in the hoodies with the red eyes. No, the person on the hoodie has the red eyes. I think. 
Okay, so you've got some black hoodies, and there's um, there's some red eyes on the hoodies. You think is that is that all you're giving me here? Um, do you guys remember what the he was supposed to look like, or no, the hoodie was supposed to look like? I, I'm not doing so well here on the memory. Oh, it's okay. You weren't there. So, um, there's I have friends, and they'll tell you. And I'll sure. turn on the the com or the link or whatever. So you guys see this guy too. He's a pretty uh he's a pretty uh slick looking guy. Not slick as in like fancy, but like like he's he's a cool guy. <laughs> Got some charisma. Yeah. He says, All right, so what's she talking about? Look, man, we're just looking for some people. And we ran across what we think is probably a gang or something associated. We don't have a lot of gang knowledge between the four of us here, two of us, how many are here? Whatever, I can't count. Uh, and I'll, and Pillar will give you a brief description of passing along what the old woman gave us. Okay. And he does some thinking and he says, all right, uh, so I, I think I got a, a fairly decent description of the thing you're looking for here. Um, I'm not, you know... I assume you guys are are reaching for help here. I'm, and I'm gonna probably have to call a couple of people. You know, I'm not like a, I'm not like a, a gang, go between guy. But I can probably get you some help. It's gonna, it's gonna cost you though. I mean, it always does. What do you need, boy? I think, um, for my time, I'm just gonna. Uh, I could probably a hundred and two hundred new yen. Oh man. Wouldn't you know? I'm down to like my last ninety. How about fifty? You, you're 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 taking me from two hundred to fifty. How about a how about a hundred and seventy five? You might not know that my time is very valuable, but let's just say it is. How about one fifty? Roll a negotiation for me. Four hits. All right, one fifty. That's that'll do. Sounds good. Uh, I'll have our little mutual friend send it right over. Okay, and um, it might take me the night. I gotta call some people, and it's it's a little late, you know. So expect it in the morning. Yeah, take your time, buddy. And uh, he goes to as he's about to go. He says, "And uh, Haley, yeah, just you keep thinking on it. I think all the time. Yeah, gives you a kind of wink, and then hangs up. That's the guy. Yeah." Yeah, he's got great hair. Doesn't he? I knew you had good taste. Doesn't Haley have blue hair? Yep. <laughs> yeah, Payday doesn't like it. He's just an old grouchy dwarf. Haley, you owe him 150. I didn't tell you I was going to give you any money. Oh, Come look on. at this. Come on, babe. We'll sell up it after it's done. It'll be fine. Mm, somehow or another, I don't think I should say yes. So I'm going to say no. I think you should pay to say yes. I mean, come on, it's your buddy here, right? He's doing us a service. Mm, I didn't ask him to do anything other than look for the dude. You're the one who said you would pay him. Face palm. I don't have any money. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I can spot you till the job's done. There we go. Pass that along to your buddy. I thought that last 90 New Yen thing was just to try to talk him down. Oh, you I really literally have broke? 99 New Yen. Oh, yeah, man. Why don't you uh, have more money? I thought you were supposed to be good at this. Yeah, hang on to yours. I'll spot the money to pay the guy. Uh, but... First of all, I've already put out 600 new yen before we got to this point. Right. Oh. We'll figure it out at the end. Yeah, those are what you call run expenses. A little. Why are and we that... paying expenses? Because that's how shadow runs are. So once we're all done here, we settle up with Pillar. Everybody pays their share. That's how it is. That's how it's going to be. I don't I don't even think they realize oh. yet what we're doing. Um, oh, you don't re realize that you're Shadowrunners now? Well, yeah, but I thought they paid expenses because why would I pay expenses? We get paid to do a job. However we do it, it doesn't matter. We, we make expenses for ourselves that comes out of the job. Makes sense to me. Oh. Yeah, I see. Okay. see? All right, well, okay. it sounds like we're not going to get anything back until tomorrow. Why don't we uh, Why don't we go ahead and split up for the night? We'll meet up again tomorrow uh, once we find out info. Or should we uh, meet up and go uh, meet uh, this uh, blue-haired guy all together as a team? 
I get the feeling he's probably not going to meet us at Meat Space. We'll, just, we'll get the info from him tomorrow. We'll work it out from there. All right. Sounds good. Well, just give me a call then. Let me go walking back toward the horseshoe. You want a ride? Uh, sure. Why not? It's a pretty cool car. Streets can get dangerous, especially for a little guy like you. All right, jump in. Uh, what? What's that supposed to mean? You're not, not exactly the tallest person I've ever met. Killer Snickers. <laughs> so does Eon. Payday grumbles. <laughs> All right, so are you guys, um, anybody doing anything in particular tonight that uh worth mentioning? I'm going to go have a beer with uh, Boker, but that's about it. It's just me uh, hanging out with my contact. <laughs> I'm going to go tell Rudolph all about my day. Isn't it like two in the morning? So? I'm going to go back <laughs> to uh, the uh, dorm hall uh, where basically various different rooms are being used by different people uh, who are squatting there and sleeping. Those of us who can afford to pay Rudolph a fair bit of New Year here and there for the privilege. Payday it's essentially really... still squatter lifestyle, but it's a little bit more secure than just living on the streets. Payday really just wanted to see where uh, Elric was crashing. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the dorm uh, buildings on campus, so it's really not very far. It's about you know two block drive maybe from where we were. Uh, it's a short, comfortable walk. Well, maybe not so comfortable in the disgustingly humid <laughs> night. Oh, that was fast. I should get me a car one of these days. <laughs> You're right. I can even set you up with one. I know some people. All right, let's find this guy Poncho first, and we'll talk. Yeah, we'll some I guess for so. that, I'm sure. Have a good night. And uh, too. kind of uh, tap the button to open up the AR display and uh, to uh, uh, so that I can see uh, Iana wave at her. Nice to meet you. And you. Hey, good job at uh, keeping cool today. Those potions could have... Uh, come in handy potions or whatever the hell they are yeah, they will at bad. some point the kind of magic i do uh usually works best if i get a few minutes to prepare ahead of time you know things are probably gonna get bad right yeah well they're gonna get bad for somebody hopefully not us but i got the mojo to help out after that stuff happens too payday nods and rolls up the uh mirrored window and speeds off what part of town does payday Shack up in horseshoe. I imagine it as a uh, what would have maybe once been a, uh, a small storage garage. Maybe uh, I've got a low lifestyle with a with a garage unit. So, um, there's probably something near the 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 um, the university that would that would qualify. In fact, I know there's a place. Let's say there's a place. A couple blocks away, that was an old um, garage that was that could easily be converted to a home. Sounds good, because I imagine he just kind of like most of his living space is pretty much like work area and such, and he pretty much has like a little office room where the with a cot and the bare necessities, where he spends a lot of time plugging into BTLs and whatnot. Who of you guys does not? If anybody does not live around the horseshoe or the the university area, so all of you do. That's convenient. I think so. I don't have a car, so I got to live close to where I work. <laughs> I'm totally gonna buy a souped-up car at some point. That's right. I will soup that thing up for you. <laughs> when you try to knock on the door, when Haley tries to knock on the door at a uh, at Rudolph's. Um, Avery, which is the, the the help the guy who helps out around the house, he's he's like coming out with a big bag of trash and looks pretty tired and he says he says, Well, hey Haley, how's it going? Pretty good. I had my first day at work. Oh well uh that's pretty exciting. Is Rudolph up? Oh no, he's he's uh he's off in well he's probably awake, but he doesn't like to be disturbed. He's he's doing his working and reading and, and whatnot in the bed, so you need me to pass a message on to him in the morning? Nope, I'll tell him about my day later. Oh, all right. Well you take care. Okay, good night. All right. And if everybody makes it to their home um eventually, then the next day happens. <laughs> All right, uh, first thing I do once I wake up and freshen up is I'm going to go ahead and um, go ahead and summon up a horse six fire spirit. That's a hell of a uh, cup of coffee. 
I might need the cup of coffee afterwards. And that's four hits in my conjuring test. All right, well, um, you had a really rough morning. Um, I got six hits on six dice. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So that's um, that's 12 drain. <laughs> that spirit did not like you. Yeah. You're, you're having a rough morning because the spirit was having a rough morning. Okay, so I take 11 stun, which is enough to knock me right the frag out. <laughs> so it looks like I'm not getting up till a bit later. <laughs> I rolled one hit out of my 11 dice to resist drain. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> Elric has an interesting morning. I'll start rolling to see how long it takes me to, to recover that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I went to bed fairly early, so I figure I got up about 8 in the morning. Well, in the meantime, around 10.30-ish in the morning on August 19th, uh, Haley, you'll get a comm call from Z-Trip. Why are you calling me so early? Hey, right, sweetheart. Um, I, got, uh, I got that information that you are paying for, so I figured you'd want it. <sighs> okay. Um, it turns out that uh that there's uh this little little gang over in West Columbia uh, near near around where uh near around where you uh were holding up for a little while the metahuman family people um anyway gangs called the the phantoms they got that uh little simple that symbol that you described and they hang out around there they're pretty small um new gang out there but Kind of, from from what I understand, the people in that area um, fear and respect them. <laughs> they're uh, they're kind of a scary group of people. But yep, the phantoms. That's who you're looking at. And uh, he gives you kind of like a a general area where they're located. It's across the river in West Columbia, but um, they uh, in a several block area near, right near. Where the families from MetaHumans place is. Can you remind me the context that the old lady said that they visited our good friend Pancho? Uh, were they looking for him too? That was it, right? She said she said she never spoke to them, but they looked like they were um, being really sneaky. She said sneaky and suspicious. They looked like they were poking around the door, and when she opened the door to poke her head out, they got spooked and kind of like left. So we want to go check these guys out? Well, I will definitely want to call everybody with my new news because I'm not going to know what to do with it. Keeps ringing on Elric's side. Yeah, Elric's going to probably be asleep until he recovers all his stun, which will be noon. Eon picks up. Payday doesn't. Hey, Eon. Were you looking to leave a message for Payday? He's unfortunately still asleep. Well... I kind of think he has to wake up because, like, Z-Trip called me, and he says that the gang we're looking for is nearby, but they're kind of scary, so I don't know that I want to go by myself. I imagine it would probably be ill-advised to go yourself. I will attempt to wake Payday. Okay, I'll call the others, and I will call everybody else. Yeah, this is great. Payday gave Elric a lift home, and then no one sees him again. <laughs> it'll probably take somebody pounding on Elric's door to, to wake him up before uh, noon I was going to say if we get this probably in the morning I will uh, Pillar will start calling him when he doesn't seem to be responding go find him passed out on the floor <laughs> yep, just fully dressed ready for his day but laid out in the floor of his uh, dorm next to a cup of coffee <laughs> yeah, it was just sitting there cold alright so it's still pretty early but we know people in that area right of Elric or West Columbia? West Columbia. Mm, I know the horseshoe. I don't have a lot of other people to call, so we want to go over there and see what we find. Just scatter it up. Get Pity. to another territory. Pity will eventually get up and touch base with everyone. I can do some scouting if anyone wants to come along. I've got, like I said, I've got one seat. Well, I'll come along. I think we can do that, right? You got it. Tell me where, and I'll be there soon. All right, I will. Uh, I'm actually over my brother's. He's uh, taking a nap on the floor. I don't know, just mage stuff. 
Oh, if you've actually, like, you know, come over and open up the door and stuff, I'll stir. Right about this point, it's about 11 o'clock. I've only got one one box of stuns, so I'm, like, waking up. Oh, what happened? I don't know. You tell me. It's almost noon. Oh, what the direct? I meant to get up early and... Oh. Huey found some info. We're gonna go check it out. Right. Why don't you stay here, though, and uh, keep working on that? It's a little rough, your uh, eyes. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'll come along with... If you want to come, we're going to hop back in the bus. I will be waiting outside the dorm room, because I know where Elric lives, but I know Rudolph doesn't really like me in there. Oh, hey. Yeah, Elric waves at Haley. Hey, what are you doing up so late? Aren't you normally up, like, really early? Yeah, I, uh, I guess I'm just, uh, whew. I'm not used to that. I'm going to wait till we're a little bit somewhere else before I try to conjure up some help. Something is angry with me. Well, you have to be nicer. Pillar will shoot payday uh, message. Hey, man. Uh, the kids want to come, so I think I'm going to take the bus again. The bus, right? Yeah, don't worry about it, man. Where's this place we're going? Uh, West Columbia. Don't you Can ever... we just walk there? I'm oh, not so good with geography. Hold on. Um, speaking to the map soft map in the sky. How far <laughs> is it? <laughs> it's, um, especially this time of year, with it being hot, even a cool time of year, it would be a, a pretty decent... 30 minute hike probably but it's it's kind of a you could probably get there in 30 or 45 minutes but you won't feel too good about yourself afterwards it's pretty hot <laughs> Dude, it's getting close to noon oh never mind yeah that's too far don't worry baby i promise i'll get us an amar car mom car as soon as i can you need to do something you guys ought to be ashamed of yourselves running around on the bus pretending to be shadow runners dude i'm broke <laughs> Nobody told me what I was supposed to have. Yeah, you guys just told her yesterday she was a Shadowrunner. <laughs> yeah. Aren't you Rigger supposed to have a van or something? Everyone expects Riggers to have a van. Everyone expects dwarves to be good with mechanics. What about T-Bird? not a good mechanic as a Rigger? Not how you part of your job? Hey, T-Bird. Look, it's a sweet car. It is a pretty sweet car. And my drones have priority seating, all right? Sure, sure. Yeah, and I bet you the electronic girlfriend was real expensive. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> not my girlfriend. How many seats does your car normally have? Um, four and a and a trunk. Shove the drone in the, the trunk. trunk. Let's go. No, there's no, already a drone in the trunk. To, to, uh, to the bus, man. To the bus, guys. Like, I'm not gonna make him kick his babies out of the car. No, you'll be really impressed. Trust me. There's no seats there left anymore. All right. There's seats on a bus. So let's go. Come on. Come on, kids. Let's go. <laughs> All right. It's still going to take you about 30 minutes after waiting for the bus and stuff like that, but it'll be considerably more comfortable. I'll actually drive there. Cause... Well, if you drive there, you can leave now and, and be there in maybe 10 minutes and um, and get a head start looking around if you want to. Pretty much. I'll pop some fly spies up as well and have them... Uh filtering their feed into me as into uh, into my view as well. All right. Well, this part of town in uh, this part of West Columbia is uh, it's kind of lower lifestyle, you know. It's um it's kind of a rundown part of town. There's a lot of old uh, houses and and small apartment buildings. All of them have bars on the windows and stuff. But they have windows. Yeah. They've got windows. I'm going to take a cursory, uh, just uh, slow drive around, uh, trying to remain as inconspicuous as possible, but uh, see what I can see. All right. Well, there's not a lot of people don't spend a lot of time outside in the middle of the day out here. Um, it, the people you do see are definitely like hanging out on their front porches or under trees and yards and stuff like that, because um, there are occasionally... Um, old trees in the yard but these yards are not much to speak of hardly any grass and very small but uh sidewalks are all torn up that kind of thing i imagine hot as usual oh yeah that's why they're all in the shade if they're out at all um any uh any any um i wouldn't really know what to look for truthfully in regards to uh, gang signs or anything like that, but I imagine there's no uh, um, gang presence that I can make out that's active around. 
Give me a perception test. Sure. Uh, four successes. Um, in this area that you're perusing, you don't see any anything that matches the description that you've been given, and nothing that stands out to you as being gangy. I uh, quickly give them a give them a message saying that I'm not seeing a lot of uh, obvious hints of gang activity in this area. Otherwise, I'll just kind of uh, keep myself occupied until they show up. What do you want to bet these guys are uh, neighborhood kids? Well, they sound really spooky to me. Red eyes and scary little hoods. Yeah, what do we know about this gang? That was about it. <laughs> They're spooky. Huh. Well, uh, let me try calling somebody I know. All right. I'm going to take up my comm link and dial up Morningstar. Mm-hmm. Just a sec. contact of mine who deals in magic stuff a lot. He's a connection for a uh, loyalty three. All right. Well, when he answers, he recognizes you and says, Elric, Elric, how's it going? All right. Doing well, Morningstar. How are you? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. You, uh, you, um, practicing, doing all sorts of learning and whatnot. Need anything? Uh, I've been doing things of a bit more practical nature as of late. Oh, interesting. And uh, I was wondering if you might know about a uh, well, a little bit of information about a gang. Do you know much about gangs, uh, particularly some of the magic-sounding gangs? Hmm. I may have heard of something. It's uh, who are you? Who are we talking about? Well, I know anything about a gang called the Phantoms. They've got this. The symbol of like a hooded figure with glowing eyes, wearing a purple robe, I think. Hmm. I uh, I don't think I've heard. Of, you know, I the Phantoms. They're around. Are they? Do they happen to be around West Columbia? Uh, just a sec. I put my hand over the thing and turned to yeah. color. West Columbia, right? Yes, that's where we're at. You got this. Yeah. Kid. Yeah, West Columbia. Interesting. I think they're new. I so I haven't heard a lot about them, but um, uh, what I have heard is mixed things about the people that in the area. You know, some people like them, some people don't. So, um, what what are you trying to what are you trying to find out about a, a, a the phantoms for? No, oh, we're looking for a friend of a friend, and uh, seems like so are they. I think they might have gotten to him first. Oh. A situation like that, huh? Well, um, I don't know. Uh, some people, they're they're fairly new to the area, from what I understand. But um, you might try asking around. I don't know. I, I don't know much about them. All right. Well, I figured I'd just give a call, see if you were in the know on them. But I know yeah. gangs aren't exactly uh, your normal uh, area of expertise. Yeah, but if you if you're looking for any uh. Any folk guy, give me a call. Uh, you know me; I'm more likely to make my own. Hmm. <laughs> and you, you should you know do that. Who, who needs a focus made? You give me a call. Feel free. Feel free to feel free to make some up and hand them over to me. I'll send people your way. We can have all kinds of cross cult communication kind of working together stuff. Hey, by the way, I am having a block party soon, and. Um, if you or your friends are, you know, it's, it's apropos of nothing, but, uh, if you want to come by and hang out, I got this, uh, fire pit in the, in the yard and I love to use it. Sure. Uh, when's the party? It's going to be uh Sunday night. All right. Well, yeah, as lo- long as we're not tied up with this business. So I think we'll, I think we'll be there. Yeah. Invite your friends over. Sounds good, man. I got to get back to work though. All right. I hang up and just kind of look look over at Pillar and shake my head. Oh, but we got invited to a party. I love parties. But yeah, he said uh, the Phantoms are pretty new, I guess, so we didn't know anything about them. That's what Z said. But he said they were scary. Or at least he said people said they were scary. I don't know that Z necessarily thinks they're scary. I don't know, they kind of sound like a whiz gang to me with the name Phantoms, like they use illusion spells or something. It's a good possibility. You can take care of that, though, right? Uh, speaking of which, I better try some conjuring again. Hopefully, uh, things go a bit better this time. I uh, kind of 
take a moment, take a deep breath, and put my hands together and close my eyes, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try conjuring up a, uh, we'll go with the Force 4 Fire Spirit this time. That's only three hits. Well, you got two net hits, and that's two stun. Okay, so three services, because I have affinity with Fire Spirits, and no drain. What's your Fire Spirit look like? Well, right now it's just an astral space. I don't want to freak out people on the bus. Oh, okay. <laughs> but that's it's right, this you're on sort the bus. of humanoid lizard-like thing that has uh, what appears to be a blackened metallic uh, skeletal structure that you can see through the flame. That's where Elric does all his best magical work. That was the problem you had with the first time trying this. You weren't on the bus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, speaking of which, uh, I guess since we have a bit of a bus ride here, I'm going to prep up a uh, little something. I've got this uh, pocket watch that I'm going to use as a uh, linchpin for a an increase reflexes alchemical preparation i'll go to roll dice for that yeah go for it just let me know um but while he's doing that eventually you'll get to uh you'll get to the bus stop um near the families for metahumans area in west columbia i'll uh i'll be waiting for them leaning up against uh leaning up against the car even in that unbearable heat i'm still wearing that leather jacket that's got to be hot. Sometimes you have to sacrifice for fashion. No. Yeah, fashion. <laughs> I'm all about. Thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed it. This show would literally not be possible without the generous support of our patrons over at Patreon. If you like the show and you want to help support it, head on over to patreon.com slash complex action. Supporting can get you access to GM notes and even the ability to vote on the direction that the story will take. We had our first vote recently and we're going to get to find out who is going to have their backstory explored first. And that was thanks to our patrons who voted on who would get to have their backstory explored. That's patreon.com slash complex action if you want to help out. There are several NPCs and organizations which were provided by patrons of complex action, and those were the Dragons Gang and their leader Icefire, submitted by Robert McPherson, Z Trip, submitted by patron Justin Fenton, and Morning Star, submitted by patron Handsome Bald Man. Also, the character art seen on our YouTube page and various social media places was done by Ethan Brewerton. Check out his awesome Shadowrun artwork at esbrewerton.tumblr.com. The background music in this episode is brought to you by Prism Shard. To hear more of his Shadowrun-inspired music, head on over to soundcloud.com slash prism-shard and uh, give him some love. The Topps Company, Inc. has sole ownership of the names, logo, artwork, marks, photographs, sounds, audio, video, and or any proprietary material used in connection with the game Shadowrun. The Topps Company, Inc. has granted permission to Complex Action to use such names, logos, artwork, marks, and or any proprietary materials for promotional and informational purposes on its websites, but does not endorse and is not affiliated with Complex Action in any official capacity whatsoever.